Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. So last winter, I picked up this tri-hull speedboat for free, and you can often find old boats like this on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for free or nearly free. It's a little more rare to find them with a trailer and a motor, although this particular trailer and motor are a little old and they both probably need work. But if you look around on your local marketplace, you can probably find something like this. Now I have a history of collecting a variety of free boats. Anything I find on the side of the road or in a dumpster, I tend to grab them and bring them home. This is the biggest one that I currently have, although I have had some slightly larger free boats in the past. Now I'm going to start uh, cleaning this up and seeing if it will run. I don't know if the motor works on this, so that's probably going to be the first priority. And then if that runs, I will probably rip out this terrible interior that somebody has decked out with car seats. And eventually, I might do some kind of a small cabin on it. But that's going to be down the road and probably a few videos from now. Today, let's just look it over, see what we can figure out, and see if this motor is salvageable at all. I've got this bin of spare engine parts that I found down in there. That's probably a good place to have them soaking in water, right? I don't even know if these go to this engine. I'm also seeing some nice squishy rot back here in the transom, so I might have to pull that all apart and redo it. Now, a lot of people ignore the rot in the transoms of old boats like this, and there was literally an article in the local Minnesota paper about one of these ripping in half when somebody throttled up their outboard, literally ripped the rear end of the boat off, and almost drowned their entire family. So you don't actually want to let that go. If your transom is rotten, and it probably is if you've got a boat with any wood inside the fiberglass that's before about 1990, maybe even after. Anyway, you want to dig into that, make sure that it's solid in there. And if it's not, beef it up with something or rip it all apart and redo it. And somebody has definitely hit some rocks with this engine. And there's a few things broken off here. I might as well do the lower end oil while I'm down here. Drain that out, see how full of water it is. That's actually not bad. Usually there's a lot more white stuff from water getting into it. There's definitely been a few impacts, but I've seen and fixed worse. A little bit of JB Weld there that uh, didn't hold on very well. And there's plenty of fossilized grease in here. I'm going to see if I can lube up some of these turning points and then make sure all the controls work. Well, some of the controls work, so that's a good start. I think the shifter is bent back on the engine, though. I don't even know what kind of redneckery is going on with this shifter. I think this is a piece of copper pipe. And then there's something broken here, so it doesn't actually want to shift very well. Looks like the mice have been at the wiring. That's always fun. It's a four-cylinder, and there's two carburetors. If you've watched any of my former videos, you know how much I love carburetors. There's an optimistic thingy. I don't think I'd want to pull start a 65 horse engine. Well, I think I'll try to give this a little bit of a cleanup and then uh, see if I can get some fuel into it and see if it goes vroom. Doesn't look too bad. This battery actually seems to be taking a charge. I'm pretty surprised. Lights still don't work. Horn works though. Now it didn't come with a key, so I'm going to have to hotwire it if I want to see if it starts. Now you would think that I know how to hotwire a boat by now, but I actually don't know what does what on this little key switch. So I'm not sure if this is OEM standard, but the wiring in this engine seems to be wired through a trailer plug. That's weird. All right, it does crank over if I jump it, so at least the starter's good. Those can be expensive. Now, I keep noticing more and more bad wiring in here, so I suspect that I'm going to have to replace part, if not all, of this wiring harness. 
because it doesn't have spark when I crank it over. And there's either something wrong with the ignition circuit or something wrong with the spark circuit. I don't quite know. So I'm going to have to replace some of these screwed up wires and then uh, give it another shot. So here's the wiring for that engine. And I actually just need this part, just the internal wiring harness. And this stupid thing is like $150 to $200 online. And I, this whole boat is probably worth $200, so there's no way I'm paying for a new one of these. So it looks pretty simple to me. It's really just a few different wires. And I think I could make this out of spare parts that I've got. That means it's time to rebuild this entire wiring harness, essentially from scratch. How hard could it be? This part's like an archaeological expedition with all this tape. Well, we're getting deeper into this thing. There sure are a lot of junky old 1960s wires in here. Now, I've never actually done a wiring harness like this before, but um, it doesn't seem all that difficult. I'm basically just going slow and tracing each wire from start to finish, replacing each one that looks crummy like this, and I'm hoping that at the end everything will work. Well, that remains to be seen. This is probably incorrect face soldering technique. Alright, we're currently attempting to jump start this from my car and hotwire it because I don't have a key. And we're trying to start it on starting fluid because we don't have a fuel tank for it. So everything about this next step is wrong. That's possibly a good sign. Now it does nothing. That's probably a bad sign. What's well, getting closer to running? All right, well, I know it's getting close to starting. It doesn't really like being started, uh, jump started off the car. So I probably need to get a new starting battery for this. Probably clean the carburetors out, which I just don't want to do, but probably have to do that anyway. So it turns out that the bolts on this carburetor are a little loose. So either somebody already tried to take this off or they vibrated loose while I've tested it. Either way, that's not great. I'm going to go ahead and take this carb off and curse at it a little bit and see if I can find a rebuild for it on the internet. I don't even know what's going on on this side of the carb. Somebody's added this little metal plate. I don't know if it's supposed to be a stop for this guy or why that's there, but I guess I better take it all off and see what's going on. These fuel lines seem to be in decent shape which is nice. It looks like somebody's done some work on this. Sometimes when you get one of these free outboards that's from 1968, they were last serviced in 1968, and everything's even more rotten than this one. But I think a few things have actually been replaced. I might have to dig into this fuel pump at some point. If it's still original and somebody's used modern gas in it, then it might be all rotten. I think in the 60s they didn't have ethanol gas and everything was full of lead. So modern, clean gas destroys these. But we'll look at the carb first and see what's going on in there. And then maybe we'll get around to this guy. Ah, yes, my old carbureted nemesis. This time with double the parts. So even more fun. Now right away I can see a few issues. These little guards are broken. I could get new ones, but I could probably just make this out of a beer can or something. I also don't see a maker name on this, so... I don't know if this is an Evinrude branded device or what this is exactly. All right, so I have not been able to find out what this carburetor is. There's no maker name on it. That number that I found, I guess, is a serial number because I can't find a rebuild kit for this. So I'm going to take it apart as carefully as possible because I really don't want to rip these interior gaskets. I do have some gasket material, so I could make a new gasket if I had to. I'd really prefer not to because it's a pain. I did take both of the needles out, and they look pretty good. They were a little dirty, 
but they're not damaged, so they're probably still fine. So as long as there's no major blockages or clogs inside of here, I should be able to reassemble it all and then it should work. But since it's a carburetor, they never work when you want them to. This one seems okay. Alright, well all the little nozzles and orifices and holes appear to go where they're supposed to go. So I'm going to try to reassemble this and not lose any of these fiddly little pieces. There's some new covers for the carb and that I guess just keeps major debris from falling in there. I've got my incredibly redneck debris catchers which also double as cheese graters. And now we got a friggin tornado warning so the weather does not want me to finish this boat. Okay I've got the carburetor reinstalled and I probably called this two carburetors at some point, but it is actually one. It's just a double barrel carburetor. I've also bought a marine starting battery so that I don't have to keep jump starting this off of the car. And I've also bought a new ignition switch so I don't have to hotwire it anymore. Well, it keeps trying to start, but it doesn't want to keep running, so there's still something wrong in here. With this much trouble starting, it might be time to resort to desperate measures, like reading the manual. Okay, I think I missed something earlier. There's really no way to get them out of there without taking this whole flywheel off, which is frustrating. Well, I cannot get the top nut of that engine flywheel off with my existing tools. So I need to go ahead and order some really large sockets. And since that's going to take a while, I won't be able to work on the engine for a little bit. So let's go ahead and end this video there. And we'll have a part two when I get my special tools in. And then we can move on to doing some other work uh, with the rest of the boat, hopefully once the engine is running. So thanks for watching this one. Stay tuned for the next one when we dig into this thing again. And we'll see you next time.